बिस्मिल्लाम असलम वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ प्लांट सोन इन दिस चैनल यू कैन गेट एनी इंफॉर्मेशन विच इज रिलेटेड टू प्लांट्स इन देर डाइवर्सिटी थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड बिफोर स्टार्ट इन माई टू डेज वीडियो आई रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल टू प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल सो टू दिस टॉपिक ऑफ माई वीडियो is about six kingdom classification system so let's start the video first of all i will discuss about the introduction organisms are traditionally classified into three domains and further subdivided into one of six kingdoms of life organisms are placed into these categories based on similarities or common characteristics some of the characteristics that are used to determine placement are cell type nutrient acquisition and reproduction the two main cell types are prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells common types of nutrient acquisition include photosynthesis absorption and ingestion types of reproduction include asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction some modern classifications abandon the term kingdom these classifications are based on cladistics which notes that kingdoms in the traditional sense are not monophyletic that is they do not all have a common ancestor in 1977 carl voss and colleagues proposed the fundamental subdivision of the prokaryotes into the u bacteria later called the bacteria and archaea bacteria later called the archaea based on ribosomal rna structure This would later lead to the proposal of three domains of life which are bacteria, archaea and eukaryota. Combined with the five kingdom model, this created a six kingdom model where the kingdom monera is replaced by the kingdoms bacteria and archaea. This six kingdom model is commonly used in the recent US high school biology textbooks which has received criticism for compromising the current scientific consensus but the division of prokaryotes into two kingdoms remain in use with the recent seven kingdom scheme of Thomas Cavalier Smith although it primarily differs in that protista is replaced by the protozoa and chromista so the life is divided into two empires the first empire is the prokaryota this is divided into two kingdoms the first kingdom is eubacteria which is also called as bacteria and the second kingdom is archaeobacteria which is also called archaea and the second empire is the pro is the eukaryota the eukaryota is divided into four kingdoms so first is the kingdom protista which is also called as protoctista and the second is the kingdom planti third is the kingdom fungi and fourth is the kingdom animalia Next I am going to discuss about the introduction of six kingdoms 1998. In 1998, Cavalier Smith published a six kingdom model which has been revised in subsequent papers. The version published in 2009 is shown below. Cavalier Smith no longer accepted the importance of the fundamental U bacteria and archaea bacteria. divide put forward by voss and others and supported by recent research the kingdom bacteria sole kingdom of empire prokaryota 
was subdivided into two subkingdoms according to their membrane topologies unibacteria and negibacteria unibacteria was divided into phyla archibacteria and posibacteria the bimembranous and unimembranous transition was thought to be far more fundamental than the long branch of genetic distance of archibacteria viewed as having no particular biological significance so cavalier smith doesn't accept the requirement for taxa to be monophyletic holophyletic in his terminology to be valid and he defines prokaryota bacteria negibacteria unibacteria and posibacteria as valid paraphyla therefore monophyletic in the sense he uses this term taxa marking important innovations of biological significance in regard of the concept of biological niche in the same way his paraphyletic kingdom protozoa includes the ancestors of animalia fungi plantae and chromista the advances of phylogenetic studies allowed the cavalier smith to realize that the phyla thought to be archaeozoans for example primitively a mitochondriate eukaryotes had it in fact secondarily lost their mitochondria typically by transforming them into new organelles which are hydrogenosomes this means that all the living eukaryotes are in fact metakaryotes according to the significance of the term which is given by the cavalier smith some of the members of the defunct kingdom archaeozoa like the phylum microsporidia were reclassified into kingdom fungi others were reclassified in kingdom protozoa like metamonada which is now the part of infra kingdom excavata because cavalier smith allows paraphyly the diagram below is an organization chart not an ancestor chart and does not represent an evolutionary tree so the life is divided into two empires the first empire is the empire prokaryota and prokaryota is further divided into the kingdom bacteria so the kingdom bacteria includes archaeobacteria as a part of a sub kingdom and the second empire is the eukaryota and eukaryota is divided into five kingdoms and the first kingdom is protozoa which includes amebozoa and choanozoa and excavata next kingdom is chromista which includes alveolata cryptophytes heteroconta brown algae and diatoms etc haptophyta and rizaria third kingdom is the plantae kingdom which includes glucophytes or glycophytes red and green algae land plants so next kingdom is the kingdom fungi and in the last it comes kingdom animalia next i am going to discuss the further about the six kingdoms of life which are archaeobacteria eubacteria protista fungi plantae and animalia the six kingdoms of life as shown into the figure which are animalia plantae fungi protista eubacteria and archaeobacteria first of all i will discuss about the archaeobacteria archaeobacteria are single celled prokaryotes originally thought to be bacteria they are in the archaea domain and have a unique ribosomal rna type the cell wall composition of these extreme organisms allows them to live in some very 
inhospitable places such as the hot springs and hydrothermal vents. Archaea of the methanogens species can be found in the guts of animals and humans. So, domain is archaea. Organisms are methanogens, halophiles, thermophiles, and psychrophiles. Cell type is prokaryotic. Metabolism depending on species, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, sulfur, or sulfide may be needed for the metabolism. Next is nutrition acquisition. Depending on species, the nutrition intake may occur through absorption, non-photosynthetic phosphorylation, or chemosynthesis. And reproduction includes a sexual reproduction by binary fission, budding, or fragmentation. This is Archaebacteria as shown into the figure. And the next I am going to discuss is the Eubacteria. These organisms are considered to be true bacteria and are classified under the bacteria domain. So bacteria live in almost every type of environment and are often associated with disease. Most bacteria, however, do not cause the disease. The bacteria are main microscopic organisms that compose the human microbiota. These, there are more bacteria in the human gut, for instance, than there are body cells. Bacteria ensure that our bodies function normally. These microbes reproduce at an alarming rate under the right conditions and most reproduce asexually by binary fission. Bacteria have varied and distinct bacterial cell shapes, including round, spiral, and rod shapes. Domain Bacteria Organisms Bacteria Cyanobacteria which is also called blue-green algae and actinobacteria. Cell type is prokaryotic. Metabolism depending on species. Oxygen may be toxic, tolerated or needed for the metabolism. Nutrition Acquisition Depending on species, the nutrition intake may occur through absorption photosynthesis or chemosynthesis and reproduction is asexual. This is eubacteria as shown into the figure. And next I am going to discuss about the protista. The protista kingdom includes a very diverse group of organisms. Has some characteristics of animals which are called protozoa while others resemble the plants, algae or fungi which are called as slime molds. These eukaryotic organisms have a nucleus that is enclosed within a membrane and some protists have organelles that are found in animal cells like mitochondria while the others have organelles that are found in plant cells like chloroplasts. Protists that are similar to plants are capable of photosynthesis and many protists are parasitic pathogens that cause disease in animals and in humans. Others exist in commensalistic or mutualistic relationships with their host. Domain Eukarya Organisms are Amoebae or Amoebae green algae, brown algae, diatoms, euglena, and slime molds. Cell type is eukaryotic. Metabolism, oxygen is needed for metabolism. Nutrition, acquisition. Depending on species, the nutrition intake may occur through absorption, photosynthesis, or ingestion. Reproduction, mostly asexual, but meiosis occurs in some species. This is protista, as shown into the figure. Next, I am going to discuss about fungi. Fungi include both unicellular, yeast and molds, and multicellular, like mushrooms, organisms. Unlike the plants, the fungi are not capable of photosynthesis. Fungi are important for the recycling of nutrients back into the environment. 
They decompose the organic matter and acquire the nutrients through absorption, while the some fungal species contain the toxins that are deadly to animals and humans. Others have beneficial uses such as for the production of penicillin and related antibiotics. Domain Eukarya Organisms include mushrooms, yeast and molds. Cell type is eukaryotic. Metabolism Oxygen is needed for metabolism. Nutrition acquisition through absorption. Reproduction sexual and asexual through spore formation. This is fungi as shown in to the figure. Next I am going to discuss about planty. The plants are extremely important to all life on earth as they provide oxygen, shelter, clothing, food and medicine for the other living organisms. This diverse group contains the vascular and non-vascular plants, flowering and non-flowering plants, as well as seed-bearing and non-seed-bearing plants. As is true for most of the photosynthetic organisms, the plants are primary producers and support life for most food chains in the planet's major biomes. This is the kingdom planty as shown in to the figure. Next I am going to discuss about the animalia. This kingdom include the animal organisms in these multicellular eukaryotes depend on plants and other organisms for nutrition. The most animals live in aquatic environments and range in size from tiny tardigrades to the extremely large blue whale. Most animals reproduce by sexual reproduction which involves the fertilization, the union of male and female gametes. Domain Eukarya Organisms, mammals, amphibians, sponges, insects and worms. Cell type is eukaryotic. Metabolism, oxygen is needed for metabolism. Nutrition, acquisition through ingestion. Reproduction, sexual reproduction occurs in most and asexual reproduction in some. This is Animalia as shown into the figure. So next I am going to discuss the further about the Six Kingdom classification. We all by now must have understood the need for the classification of living organisms. Many classification schemes have been proposed since ancient times. The classification schemes got improved as the knowledge of the fields like microscopy, biochemistry and genetics was advanced. Next, I am going to discuss about history of classification systems. Many schemes of classifying the living organisms were proposed and were improved from time to time. Kingdom is the second highest rank below the rank domain. Kingdoms are divided into smaller groups which are called phyla. The hierarchy of classification goes as domain, kingdom, phylum, class order, family, genus, and species. This is called a taxonomic rank and the last two names, genus and species, form the biological nomenclature. Next is Six Kingdom Classification Scheme. In 1977, a scientist named Carl Vos proposed a Six Kingdom Classification Scheme. He essentially separated the monera into archibacteria and eubacteria based on the ribosomal RNA structure and this led to the proposal of three domains of life as bacteria, archaea and eukarya. This model combined with five kingdom classification put forth six kingdoms which are clustered into three domains and he believed that all the three domains have originated from a common ancestor which is also known as progenot. In this scheme, the kingdom Monera is replaced with kingdom Archibacteria and kingdom Eubacteria. So the life is divided into two empires. The first empire is Prokaryota 
which is divided into two kingdoms which are Archibacteria and Eubacteria. Next empire is Eukaryota and Eukaryota is divided into the four kingdoms which are Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. So next I am going to discuss about the difference between the Archibacteria and Eubacteria. So Carl Vos proposed the scheme of six kingdom classification by separating Archibacteria from Eubacteria and based on the sequence of 16 subunit ribosomal RNA genes. Archibacteria differ from Eubacteria in some important ways such as the composition of the cell wall. So this is the main difference between the Archibacteria and Eubacteria. So first I will discuss about the point of Archibacteria and then I will discuss the Eubacteria. First Archibacteria capable of living and thriving in extreme conditions. Eubacteria capable of living and thriving in normal conditions. Archibacteria archaea thrive in extreme conditions such as hot springs, ocean depths and geothermal vents etc. Eubacteria Eubacteria are found in air, soil, water and in and on other organisms. Archibacteria Cell wall is made up of pseudopeptidoglycan. Eubacteria Cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan with the muramic acid or sometimes lipopolysaccharides. Archibacteria Archibacteria are non-pathogenic. Eubacteria Eubacteria are pathogenic. Archibacteria, asexual reproduction with binder fission, fragmentation or budding. Eubacteria, sexual as well as asexual reproduction occurs in them. So next is the question. What are the features of six kingdom classification system? This six kingdom scheme of classification is based on similarities or common characteristics. The basic characteristics used for classification in this scheme are cell type, nutrition and reproduction. Two cell types are prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Modes of nutrition are photosynthetic, saprotrophic and heterotrophic while the reproduction is sexual and asexual type. So first is the kingdom Archibacteria. These are the most primitive organisms on earth. They are single cell prokaryotes with unique ribosomal RNA type. The nucleus is primitive and their cell wall composition makes them suitable to live in some extreme places on the earth like the hot springs and geothermal vents and they are part of the microbiota of all the organisms. They can be found in the guts of animals and humans and they exhibit a great variety of chemical reactions in their metabolism. Their domain is Archibacteria. Organisms included in it are methanogens, halophiles, thermophiles and psychrophiles. Cell type is prokaryotic. Metabolism use hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, methane, hydrogen sulfide or elemental sulfur and ammonia depending on the species. Nutrition phototrophs uses the sunlight. Lithotrophs inorganic compounds are used by them and organotrophs which uses the organic compounds. Next is reproduction. Asexual reproduction by binary fission or multiple fission, budding and fragmentation. So this is Archibacteria as shown into the figure. Next I am going to discuss about the kingdom Eubacteria. These are considered to be true bacteria and they are found in diverse places on earth and are part of the microbiota of animals and humans and many of them causes diseases. Bacteria show variety in their cell shapes like round, spiral, comma shaped and rod shaped etc. Their domain is Eubacteria. Organisms are bacteria and cyanobacteria cell type prokaryotic metabolism aerobes need oxygen while anaerobic bacteria do not use oxygen nutrition through absorption photosynthesis or chemosynthesis reproduction 
asexual by binary fission and high growth rate. This is gram positive bacteria which is belonging to the kingdom U bacteria as shown into the figure. And next I am going to discuss about the kingdom Protista. It is a diverse group of organisms with some resembling animals, protozoa, while others showing the characteristics of plants, algae and fungi like slime molds. So protists mark the evolution from the indistinct nucleus to a well-defined nucleus and are thus eukaryotes. Some may have animal-like organelles like mitochondria, while the some may have a plant-like organelles like chloroplast. And these organisms can be found in equally diverse places. They do many eukarya. Organisms are amoeba, dinoflagellates, diatoms, euglena, plasmodium, and giardia or giarda, etc. Cell type is eukaryotic. And metabolism, aerobic, oxygen is needed for the metabolism. Nutrition, phototrophic and heterotrophic, ingestion or absorption. Reproduction, mostly a sexual reproduction by binary or multiple fission. Sexual reproduction by gamete formation is also observed. This is paramecium as an example of protista as shown into the figure. Next I am going to discuss about the kingdom fungi. The fungi may be microscopic as yeast or molds or most familiar multicellular forms such as the mushrooms. The characteristic feature of fungi is the presence of chitin in their cell walls. They do not photosynthesize but absorb the food by secreting digestive enzymes on the food substrates. The term typically used to describe this mode of nutrition is the saprotrophic mode of nutrition. Many of the fungal species cause diseases but they are important as well for recycling the nutrients back to the environment. For example, their domain is eukarya. Organisms like mushrooms, yeast and molds. Cell type eukaryotic, unicellular or multicellular. Metabolism, aerobes, need oxygen and some are facultative anaerobes which do not need oxygen. Nutrition. Saprotrophic secrete the digestive enzymes onto the substrates. Reproduction sexual or asexual through spores. This is fungi as an example of kingdom fungi as shown into the figure. Next is the kingdom planti. The plants are extremely important for all life on earth and are useful for getting oxygen, shelter, food, clothing, timber and medicines. Plants can be vascular or non-vascular, flowering or non-flowering and seed bearing and non-seed bearing. They are the producers of almost all food chains in all major biomes. They do many eukarya organisms are trees, herbs, shrubs, mosses and ferns, etc. Cell type eukaryotic and multicellular. Metabolism strictly aerobes which need oxygen. So nutrition is photosynthesis, reproduction is sexual reproduction by vegetative propagation and sexual reproduction by gamete formation. So these are the trees which belong to the kingdom planty as shown into the figure. Next is the kingdom Animalia. This is a most diverse group of organisms and they are eukaryotic, multicellular and depend on plants and other animals for food. Animalia is further classified broadly into non-chordates and chordates. Their domain is eukarya, cell type is eukaryotic and multicellular. Their organisms are worms, insects, arthropods, spiders, fish, birds, and mammals, etc. Metabolism strictly aerobes, which need oxygen. Nutrition is heterotrophs, depend on plants or other animals. Reproduction, mostly sexual through gamete formation, and some forms show asexual reproduction by budding and fission. These are animals belonging to the kingdom Animalia as shown into the figure. 
this are these are the six kingdoms and this is six kingdom classification as shown into the figure first is the kingdom planty which is multicellular and eukaryotic next is animalia which is multicellular and eukaryotic third is fungi which is multicellular and eukaryotic fourth is protista which is eukaryotic unicellular and multicellular next is eubacteria which is unicellular and prokaryotic next is archaebacteria which is unicellular and prokaryotic so the six kingdom classification scheme which is proposed by the call was in 1977 as shown into the figure so this is the six kingdoms characteristics chart first is um, the kingdom eubacteria then comes archaebacteria then protista then fungus then plant and last is animal so first characteristic is the cell type eubacteria prokaryotic archaebacteria prokaryotic protista eukaryotic fungus eukaryotic plant eukaryotic animal eukaryotic next characteristic is the number of cells eubacteria unicellular archaebacteria unicellular protista most unicellular fungus most multicellular plant multicellular animal multicellular next is level of organization eubacteria cell archaebacteria cell protista most cell fungus most tissue plant systems animal systems next is cell wall eubacteria peptidoglycan archaebacteria contains uncommon lipids protista pectin or non green algae cellulose fungus chitin plant cellulose and animal none next is the mode of nutrition eubacteria auto or heterotroph archaebacteria auto or heterotroph protista auto or heterotroph fungus heterotroph through absorption plants are autotroph and animal heterotroph so next is the reproduction eubacteria asexual archaebacteria asexual protista sexual and asexual fungus sexual and asexual plant sexual and asexual animal sexual and asexual next is mutality eubacteria submotile archaebacteria nonmotile protista motile and nonmotile fungus most nonmotile plant nonmotile and animal are motile next is symbiotic relationship eubacteria fix the nitrogen many pathogenic aid in human digestion archaebacteria aid in digestion protista many pathogenic malaria african sleeping sickness and amoebic dysentery cellulose digestion fungus many pathogenic athletes foot yeast infection ringworm lichen plant epiphyte mycorrhiza or mistletoe next is the animal parasitic worms and vernacles vernacles and plant fish next is the ecological importance eubacteria fix the nitrogen decom fix nitrogen decomposers archaebacteria are decomposers protista algae major aquatic oxygen and food producers in algal bloom fungus decomposers plant major oxygen and food source photosynthesis trophic level 1 animal human impact on environment other give rise to the eukaryote organelles archaebacteria can live in extreme conditions and sister of eukaryotes protista toothpaste teeth whiteners next is fungus fermented food products food source antibiotics plant can't live without m medicine source animal invertebrates and vertebrates 
So, the examples of the U bacteria are Escherichia coli or E. coli and Streptococcus, Archibacteria, Methanobacteria, Protista, Algae, Diatoms and Amoebas, Fungus, Lichen, Yeast and Mushrooms, Plant, Trees, Flowers and Grasses, Animal, Sponges, Sponges, Mammals, etc. So next I am going to discuss the further about the six kingdom system of the Grey and Doolittle's concept. Though we talk us five kingdom system solve many problems lack of distinction between Archibacteria, Archaea and Bacteria remained untouched. Gray and Doolittle's 1982 proposed to classify the organisms into two super kingdoms, the Prokaryota and Eukaryota. The super kingdom Prokaryota further divided into two kingdoms which are Archibacteria and Eubacteria, whereas the super kingdom Eukaryota divided into four kingdoms, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Therefore, they suggest adopting the six distinct kingdoms to classify all the organisms. According to this proposal, the microorganisms spread in four kingdoms, Archibacteria, Eubacteria, Protista, Fungi, out of six all. So the living beings are classified into two super kingdoms. The first super kingdom is Prokaryota and the next super kingdom is Eukaryota. Super Kingdom Prokaryota is divided into two kingdoms. The first kingdom is Archaeobacteria and the second kingdom is Eubacteria. The kingdom Archaeobacteria includes all the bacterial forms separated as Archaeobacteria and the kingdom Eubacteria includes bacteria and cyanobacteria. And the next super kingdom Eukaryota is divided into four kingdoms. Then the first kingdom is Kingdom Protista which includes microalgae and phytoplanktonic slime molds and protozoa. Second kingdom is fungi, which includes microfungi and macrofungi. Third kingdom is plantae, which includes microalgae, bryophytes, tridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Next is the kingdom animalia, which includes invertebrates and vertebrates. So, next I am going to discuss further about the six kingdoms and the three domains classification system. In the years around 1980, there was an emphasis on phylogeny and redefining the kingdoms to be monophyletic. The animalia, plantae and fungi were generally reduced to core groups of closely related forms and the others thrown into the protista. Based on ribosomal RNA studies, the call was divided the prokaryotes into two kingdoms called the eubacteria and archibacteria. Such, such six kingdom system have become the standard in many works. In 1990, Carl Voss proposed that the eubacteria, archibacteria and eukaryota represent the three primary lines of descent and although he promoted them to the domains, naming them bacteria, archaea and eukarya, this three domain classification has received the notable criticism but has generally displaced the, uh, the older two empire system as a way of organizing the kingdoms together. To the, so, the three domains are Bacteria, Archaea and Eukarya. These are three domains and these are arised from a common ancestor. And the domain Bacteria has given rise the kingdom Eubacteria. Next domain is the Archaea which has given rise to Archaebacteria. And the third domain is Eukarya which is being divided into Protista, Plantae, fungi and animalia. So in this way, common ancestor has given rise to three domains, bacteria, archaea and eukarya. And these three domains have given rise to six kingdoms. 
so when these three domains are further divided they give rise to six kingdoms which are eubacteria archibacteria protista planti fungi and animalia as shown into the figure the six kingdom classification of prokaryotes and eukaryotes the biological world is so diverse and it has shown a great deal of biodiversity during its million of years of history with million of organisms in the list of studies so with such a huge biodiversity it has become very much important to actually divide and classify the various organisms for the age of study and recognition due to this reason the biological classification system is widely used and in the present day the classification system that is widely used is the phylogenetic classification system so now the question what is phylogenetic classification system phylogenetic classification system is the system of biological classification um in which all the living and extinct organisms in the world are classified based on evolutionary relationships among the organisms based on the phylogenetic six kingdom classification system these are divided as kingdom archibacteria these are prokaryotes next is the kingdom eubacteria these are prokaryotes third is the kingdom protista these are eukaryotes fourth is the kingdom fungi these are also eukaryotes fifth is the kingdom animalia these are eukaryotes and sixth is the kingdom planti these are also eukaryotes so the biological classification has divided the living organisms into two types prokaryotes and eukaryotes prokaryotes are divided into two kingdoms which are archibacteria and eubacteria on the other hand the eukaryotes are divided into four kingdoms which are protista fungi planti and animalia so there are two kingdoms of prokaryotes the first kingdom is the archibacteria these are not true bacteria and are found only in harsh habitats like the salty areas hot springs and marshy areas etc second kingdom is the kingdom eubacteria these are true bacteria and are found in abundance in nature and they are unicellular and prokaryotic microscopic cells there are four kingdoms of eukaryotes which are the kingdom protista these are all single celled eukaryotes with well defined cell organelles next is the kingdom fungi fungi are non vascular eukaryotic organisms that they have a true nucleus which is enclosed in specific nuclear membranes next is the kingdom planti which includes all the eukaryotic chlorophyll pigment containing organisms and that have a cell wall in common So next is the kingdom animalia which include all the heterotrophic eukaryotic organisms and that are multicellular and lack the cell walls the two kingdoms of prokaryotes so the first kingdom is the archibacteria cell structure prokaryotes when evolved about 3 to 4 billion years ago body organization unicellular nuclear membrane absent mode of nutrition autotrophic chemosynthetic and photosynthetic heterotrophic saprophytic and parasitic reproduction by binary fission so this is archibacteria as shown into the figure next i'm going to discuss further about the kingdom archibacteria archibacteria are special since they live in some of the harshest habitats and are named accordingly as halophiles living in extremely salty areas and thermoacidophiles living in hot springs and methanogens living in marshy areas so archibacteria differ from other varieties of bacteria as they have a different type of cell wall structure the structure of their cell wall is very much prominent in their survival in extremely harsh conditions so archibacteria are considered extremophiles because they live in a variety of harsh environments and can tolerate the extreme conditions such as acidity and salinity and they appear to be uh, living forces acting as a connecting link in evolution between the bacteria and multicellular eukaryotes so the examples of the archibacteria are as follow first is the acidiolobes acidiolobes saccharovorans next is the staphylo staphylothermus 
Stephanothermus hallonicus. Next is Haloarcula hispanica. Next is the Machinococcus janeshi, etc. So, next is the kingdom U bacteria. Sand structure prokaryotes when evolved 3 to 4 billion years ago and body organization unicellular. Nuclear membrane absent, mode of nutrition autotrophic, chemosynthetic, and photosynthetic. Heterotrophic, saprophytic, and parasitic. Reproduction, binary fission, and through conjugation. This is the example of the of this kingdom and uh, it is also called as E. coli or Escherichia coli as shown into the figure. Next is the kingdom U. bacteria. U. bacteria those type of true bacteria that are both autotrophs and heterotrophs and this means that they can reproduce their own food and can even be dependent on the producers for their food. And they can obtain the nutrients from other living organisms as well. And some are pathogens while the some are parasites. And they are also chemosynthetic in nature which means that they get energy by breaking down and releasing the energy of inorganic compounds containing the sulfur and nitrogen. And these are found in almost all the surfaces and consist of nearly 5000 to 6000 species that have been discovered to date. These are the most abundant bacteria in nature and they are characterized by the presence of a rigid cell wall and if motile a flagellum. The examples are urea plasma and mycoplasma and Escherichia coli and streptococcus pneumoniae etc. The four kingdoms of eukaryotes, third is the kingdom protista, cell structure eukaryotes when evolved 1.5 billion years ago. Body organization unicellular, nuclear membrane present, mode of nutrition autotrophic, chemosynthetic or photosynthetic, heterotrophic, saprophytic and parasitic, reproduction asexually and sexually. Algae, seaweed is the example. And next is the kingdom protista. All the unicellular eukaryotes are placed under protista and they are a diverse collection of organisms in this kingdom. But the boundaries of this kingdom are not well defined. Protists are simple eukaryotic organisms that are neither animal, plants nor fungi. These are unicellular in nature and often seen living as colony of cells. Most protists live in water, damp terrestrial environments or even as parasites. The protistin cell body has a well defined nucleus and other membrane bound organelles and some have flagella and cilia. They can reproduce both asexually and sexually by a process involving sulfurian and zygote formation. Examples are algae, amoebas, euglena, plasmodium, paramecium and slime molds etc. Next is the kingdom fungi. Cell structure eukaryotes when evolved 1.1 billion years ago. Body organization multicellular with loose tissue. Nuclear, mem uh, nuclear membrane present, mode of nutrition heterotrophic, saprophytic and parasitic, reproduction vegetative, asexual and sexual and this is a mushroom which is also called as the toadstool fungi as shown into the figure. Next is uh, more about the kingdom fungi. Multicellular microorganisms such as yeast and molds and mushrooms are classified under the kingdom fungi. So most fungi are heterotrophic and absorb the soluble organic matter from dead substrates and hence are called saprophytes. Those that depend on living plants and animals are called saprophytes. Those fungi which live in close association with algae are called lichens and with roots of higher plants as mycorrhiza. So these are these fungi are symbionts and the bodies of the fungi are multicellular containing long slender thread like structures called hyphae. Mycelium is the network of hyphae. The examples are sac fungi, yeast, mushrooms and mold etc. Next is the kingdom plantae. Cell structure eukaryotes when evolved 500 million years ago, body organization multicellular with tissue and organ system, nuclear membrane present, mode of nutrition autotrophic and photosynthetic in reproduction asexually and sexually. This is the kingdom plantae as shown into the figure. 
Kingdom plant includes all the chlorophyll containing organisms and commonly called the plants. So kingdom plant is composed of all plants. Only a few members are partially heterotrophic and those that includes are some of the insectivorous plants or parasites. The cells of these organisms have green colored chloroplast and cell wall that is mainly made up of cellulose. So Kingdom plant includes algae, bryophytes, tridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. And examples are flowering plants, cactus, seed plants, moss, algae, vascular plants, and embryophytes, etc. Next is the kingdom, kingdom animalia. Cell structure eukaryotes and when evolved 700 million years ago, body organization multicellular with the tissue organ system. Nuclear membrane present, mode of nutrition heterotrophic and holozoic and saprophytic etc. Reproduction mostly sexually. So this is the kingdom animalia. This is the example of the kingdom animalia as shown into the figure. Kingdom animalia includes all the heterotrophic eukaryotic organisms that are mostly multicellular and lack the cell wall. Kingdom animalia is composed of all animals and these are directly and indirectly dependent on the producers. For example, the plants for their food. Their mode of nutrition is holozoic, that is by the ingestion of food. One important characteristic of these organisms is that they follow a definite growth pattern and grow into adults that have a definite shape and size. Higher animals show elaborate sensory and neuromotor mechanisms. So most of them are capable of locomotion. The sexual reproduction is done by the sexual intercross between the male and female organisms followed by the zygote and then the embryological development and the examples are humans, cats, dogs, earthworms and cockroaches etc. Next I am going to discuss about the kingdoms in biology. The term kingdom when used in biological taxonomy is a separation and characterization of different types of life and there are six kingdoms of life which are organized into three domains of life in U.S. textbooks. Domain and Kingdoms So first domain is Eukaryota and it includes the kingdoms like Animalia, Planti, Fungi and Protista. And the second domain is Archaea which includes the kingdoms Archaea and third domain is Bacteria which include the kingdom Bacteria. Kingdoms in biology. The four kingdoms that make up the domain eukaryota include the eukaryotic organisms or organisms that have cells with nuclei. The domain archaea includes the prokaryotic or one-celled organism and the entire bacterial world is found in the kingdom bacteria which makes up the domain bacteria. So each kingdom is then divided into subcategories or phyla. So these kingdom examples make up a classification system for all the living things on earth. First is kingdom animalia. So members of the kingdom animalia are eukaryotic organisms and they reproduce sexually or asexually through parthenogenesis or pathogenesis. So when you think of an animal, you're probably thinking of organisms from the phylum Chordata, but there are many more. So animals in the kingdom Animalia are organized into the seven phyla. First phyla is the, so first phyla is the Annelida. Annelida includes the worms and leeches and the second is the arthropoda which includes insects, spiders and crustaceans. Next is chordata which includes mammals, fish, reptiles and birds. Next is cnidaria 
which includes jellyfish and anemone and corals next is mollusca which includes octopuses squid and cuttlefish next is the platyhelminthes which includes platworms tapeworms and flukes next is the porifera which includes the freshwater sponges and sea sponges so next kingdom is the kingdom plantae the kingdom plantae includes all plants and like all members of the kingdom animalia these organisms are eukaryotic and may reproduce sexually by mitosis so if it's alive has more than one cell and uses the sun for energy and through the process of photosynthesis it prepares its own food these organisms belongs in the kingdom plantae so the four main phyla in the kingdom plantae are angiospermophyta flowers fruit trees and vegetables are included in it next is bryophyta which includes mosses and hornworts and liverworts next is the coniferophyta which is also known as the pinophyta and it includes pine trees fir trees and redwood and next is phylicinophyta which includes ferns next is the kingdom fungi fungi in the kingdom fungi are also eukaryotic organisms so they reproduce sexually and asexually by the formation of spores because they produce spores there are five phyla in the kingdom fungi and which includes ascomycota ascomycota includes truffles morels and yeasts next is basidiomycota which includes mushrooms puffballs and jelly fungi next is chytridiomycota which includes water molds and chytrids next is glomeromycota which includes tree fungi for example arbuscula mycorrhizas and the next is zygomycota which includes bread molds and mycorrhiz and mucorellies mucorellies or mucorallies and the next is the kingdom protista the kingdom protista consists of an eukaryotic organism that is not an animal plant or fungus they only reproduce asexually or via the meiosis and these organisms are also autotrophs in which don't need feed on the other forms of the life for their sustenance and the kingdom protista has 45 phyla so which can be divided into the following types first is protozoa protozoa are animal like protists and it includes amoebae and euglena next is protophyta the plant like protists for example algae and lichens next is molds for example slime molds and water molds next kingdom is the kingdom archaea the organisms in the kingdom archaea previously which are called as the kingdom archaebacteria these are prokaryotic and which means that they do not have nuclei these single cell microorganisms use a sexual reproduction by the help of binary fission the five main phyla in the kingdom archaea are prenarchaeota prenarchaeota includes thermophiles and psychrophiles next is the eurarchaeota or urea archaeota it includes halophiles and methanogens next is coracaeota which includes so uh, the example of this is coracium cryptophyllum and next is the nanoarchaeota nanoarchaeota includes nanoarchaeum and next is the thyme archaeota and thyme archaeota the example of this is synarchium 
symbiosum and the other example is nitrosopamilus nitrosopamilus maritimus so the final kingdom is the kingdom bacteria the final kingdom is the kingdom bacteria and sometimes it is known as the kingdom u bacteria it includes all types of bacteria which are biologically different from archaea and bacteria are one cell prokaryotic organisms that reproduce sexually uh, that reproduce asexually the kingdom includes a range of 40 to 100 phyla with many more proposed phyla and the kingdom bacteria is typically grouped into the following super phyla so first is the actinobacteria next is candidate phyla radiation next is cyanobacteria and the next is the microgen mates microgen mates and then comes parcobacteria then comes patisi bacteria and the next comes planktobacteria next is proteobacteria and the next is sphingobacteria and the last is terabacteria so next time i'm going to discuss about biological classification so kingdom is the second highest taxonomic rank in the modern system of biological classification phylum comes next in the taxonomy which follows this order domain kingdom phylum class order family genus and species and every species on earth no matter how small can be organized according to this hierarchy but the taxonomic classification can change and often does when a new species are discovered so biologists always try to classify an organism as accurately as possible so even it if it means adding a new phylum kingdom or even a domain now the topic is biodiversity sustains our planet so whenever you go on earth you will find examples of each of these kingdoms and they can be as obvious as a dog earthworm or human in the kingdom animalia or they can be as microscopic as a single celled organism that causes a bacterial infection so learn more about the biodiversity and how the living things depend on each other with these examples of natural ecosystems in biology the term kingdom can also refer to a region or group that is governed by a king or queen and the type of the monarchy can vary from absolute to constitutional and learn more about the political and royal kingdoms with these examples of different types of the monarchies if you like my video please subscribe to my youtube channel and press the bell icon as well for further notifications thanks for watching thank you so much